So I'm really happy to present this month's speaker, Molly. Thank you so much. Thank you. I was a very sensitive kid. I was the corner child, you know, the kid who stands in the corner and analyzes the room before starting to play with the other kids. I was very emotional and analytical. And my everyday life was a roller coaster, going from crocodile tears to pure happiness and back again until I eventually got exhausted. My uh, parents were exhausted. I was a very sensitive kid. But already as a kid, my sensitivity got confused amongst the adults, which meant that as early as in kindergarten, I was told to toughen up. When I started school, they told me I would not make it in this world by being soft. I got so fed up by this message that when I finally started to work, I was becoming so tough that I got my bur first burnout by the age of 19. Though this might sound like the beginning of a tragic story, I'm going to tell you it is not, because this was more or less the beginning of my life. Because this was the time when I figured out that I am a highly sensitive person. I'm so glad to be here today to talk to you about the highly sensitive person and the inclusion of sensitivity at workplaces. So a highly sensitive person, what is the first thing that comes to your mind when I say that I am a highly sensitive person? That I cry a lot? That you have to be extra careful around me? But first, let me ask you this. How many in here have heard the expression before and know what it's all about? What a crowd. <laughs> the most common question I get when I tell people that I am a highly sensitive person is, so, you have some kind of disorder? <laughs> I really wish I was kidding, but I'm not. <laughs> Highly, high sensitivity is not a diagnosis, much less a disorder. It is simply a genetic personal trait. The definition of a highly sensitive person is someone who experiences high physical, mental or emotional response to stimuli. And today you estimate that around 15 to 20 percent of our population is actually highly sensitive and equally split by men and women, which might come as a surprise for some of you. The second most common question I get is, so, and it's usually, it's usually from the rational ones, the blue, blue people, and it goes, so you have like fact on this? Yes, I do. <laughs> um, high sensitivity is a real research-based characteristic found by Dr. Elaine Aaron. In psychology, anyone who tests as having a very high degree of SPS, which is short for sensory processing sensitivity, is considered highly sensitive. Dr. Elaine Aaron uses uh, four characteristics to uh, explain high sensitivity, which is represented by the acronym DOES. So D is for deep processing. H HSPs tend to process things on a deeper level, which means that every impression and every information is being analyzed on a deeper level. And this is the foundational trait of a highly sensitive and what gives them a sense of burnout or overload. O is for overstimulation. HSPs tend to process details very deeply, which also means that they get more affected by uh, stimuli. And 
this is why HSPs often can feel overwhelmed in situations where others would feel completely fine. And it's not like HSPs can't handle high stimulus environments. It is simply that they get more affected. E is for both empathy and emotional reactivity. Empathy in this context simply means that uh, HSPs feel what you feel. We are very, very aware of our own and other people's emotions, so much that we care of helping others. And uh, HS uh, HSPs also uh, tend to um, feel uh, they absorb emotions, even when you um, aren't uh, visually expressing them. And emotional reactivity in this, uh, this really means that we react to uh, positive and negative experiences um, equally as much. Um, we can get equally affected by good and bad days. And S is for sensitivity to subtleties. HSPs are natural, uh, naturals when it comes to picking up on uh, subtle cues and uh, details that others easily miss. It's not like we have super hearing or super vision. It is simply what happens when our nervous system is processed to wire, uh, wire information more deeply than others. So, how is it like being a highly sensitive person? Of course, it's, it's different, but... It is like living with all of your senses on full alert all the time, reacting to stimuli in all aspects. And this can mean external stimuli like uh, the surroundings or the people you're with, but also internal stimuli like your thoughts, emotions and realizations. It is far more than just being an emotional human being. So, if you are now thinking, well, I also have emotions and reactions, what makes them so special? I can tell you that you are probably not a highly sensitive person. Everyone feels emotional and sensitive at times, but the HSPs uh, are at the, far, uh, is at the far end of the spectra, reacting to stimuli in a much greater way. Sometimes, I call it the underground syndrome. And let me explain why. So a friend and an HSP and a friend enters the underground. The HSPs smell the sweet perfume of a bypasser. The guy walking by with the donut, the Asian restaurant who's today cooking something with prawn, the oil from the trail the hormonal teenager who didn't buy that deodorant. And then the friend says, wow, it really, really stinks down here. And this is really the core of being an HSP and how you experience the world in a different way. As an HSP, you absorb everything in your surroundings, which makes you affected by too much noise, too much, light, too much light and the energy of other people. And now you might wonder why I decided to stand here on stage in a crowdy and noisy event with a lot of people, a lot of lo lights in the spotlight. Well, this actually gets me to my next point. HSPs are often confused with introverts. The fact is that anyone can be highly sensitive, whether introverted, extroverted, or anywhere in between. I am a highly sensitive person, and I am an extrovert, highly sensitive person, which can come with a bit of drawbacks. So let me explain. It is my dream and my total nightmare with social environments, because I love being social, hanging with people, uh, going to events, being on stage. Um, but it is also a nightmare, because I will eventually get exhausted. 
it is a constant battle between the traits, living like an uh, extrovert, highly sensitive person. Uh, being a in, uh, highly sensitive person, an uh, introvert highly sensitive person, I imagine is something completely different since here your traits work better together. You want to be alone and you need to be alone. How do you know that someone is a highly sensitive person? Well, you don't. There's not a sign saying, be aware, highly sensitive person. We are not a secret society that gathers and cries together. We are not a. We don't have a special handshake or greeting phrase. We are not only men or women. We are just normal people hiding away our sensitivity, in the belief that we are the only ones who feel this way. So, how do you know? I am going to tell you something extremely mind-blowing. So listen closely. How do you know that someone is a highly sensitive person? Well, communication. Ask the person, are you a highly sensitive person? Or if you are a highly sensitive person, say, I am a highly sensitive person. Communication is really key. When I moved away from home, my mom always made these weekly calls uh, to see if I survived whatever I was up to, like most moms do. When she asked me how I was, I always responded in the same way. I said, Mom, I'm fine. It's, it's just a lot. I kept answering the same thing until one day when she said, Molly, you always say it's a lot, but you don't have anything to do. And this is really the core of being an HSP. And that's how it is. We experience a very vivid inner life because we absorb everything and our re uh, reactions are stronger to things. And for us, our currency is energy. And we have to spend it really wisely. For us, it takes more energy doing the exact same thing as someone without the trade. Which is why we need time to recharge. By recharging, I mean taking a break for, from all kinds of stimuli. Breathing, just relaxing. If you see a person with headphones on, an HSP person with headphones on. They are most likely not listening to rock or metal. They are probably just sitting there with their headphones on to block out sounds, to recharge. So, this vivid inner life is something we deal with every day. A person once asked me, so can't you just stop being that sensitive? I don't think it's good for you. And I said, can't you just stop being that open -minded, close minded? I don't think it's good for you. But seriously, let's talk about sensitivity as a flaw. Even though we are heading in the right direction, Many of us still think of sensitivity as a flaw. And this is not about pointing fingers or blaming the world, because we are equally responsible for this. Why? Well, because when someone uh, used to say to me, Molly, you are so sensitive, I used to crook my back and say, yeah, I know, I can't help it. But now when someone tells me I'm sensitive, I say, thank you so much. That's kind of you to say. What I want to say with this is that we, all, we so often see sensitivity as something that is negative. It's a flaw, something scary, or not, just nothing we want to deal with in general. But it is simply a genetic personal trait that comes with both advantages and drawbacks. And this is not a talk about how everyone needs to be sensitive or soft or gentle. 
It is simply about acknowledging the uh, sensitive contribution to society. Since we are experiencing this vivid inner life, many of us are dreamers, idealists, creators. HSPs tend to be really creative, artis artistically, um, in artistically <laughs> intuitive, um, highly aware of the needs of others, so much that we thrive in careers as uh, writers, artists, counselors, therapists. Which is why I would guess that more than 20% of you in here today has, uh, have sensitivity as a, high um, as a strong personal trait. And we contribute to the world in the most magical way. I imagine many highly sensitive... Um, I imagine many genius people throughout history have been uh, highly sensitive. Mozart, Gandhi, Picasso, and so on. I'm not saying that every HSP is a genius. Let me tell you that. I have pushed the door that said pool more times than I can count. <laughs> but my point is when the sensitives hide their sensitivity, we will all lose. Harnessing this trade would have a positive outcome for all, and especially on workplaces. And here's why. HSPs are very aware of their own and other people's emotions, so much that they come across as being very emotionally um, intelligent. We know our strengths and weaknesses, we would know uh, who we are, and we know what we are capable of. We can simply bring awareness to a workplace. HSP is also a trade of compassion. Managers and leaders with this trade often offers compassionate leadership. We are colleagues, leaders, managers, people, guided by the heart. We are also true believers in the power of teamwork, which is why we are more cooperative than we are competitive. But most of all, we bring balance to a workplace with our softer sides. I'm not saying that we are better in any ways. We are simply just different and we try to make the world a little bit more humane every day. Just recently, my dad told me something that his dad told him when he was younger. In business, be aware of the serious ones. Your greatest achievements will come from personal relationships with people. And that is something I want to pass on to you. We so often forget that business is so much more than just numbers, expansion rates and results. We are just human dealings with, dealing with humans. So what can we do to include sensitivity at workplaces? Well, first of all, stop asking why are you so sensitive? And stop saying you need to toughen up. No matter how much you tell us, we will still remain sensitive. All we really need is understanding and acceptance. By acknowledging the way you speak about sensitivity will make all the difference. HSPs also need time to recharge. If possible, by establishing flexible working, working from home, creating spaces where they can breathe, you will increase the chance of keeping your HSPs for a longer time. And we also need to 
we need to stop using the term or and start using the term and. I'm not strong or sensitive. I'm strong and sensitive. But most of all, we need to start communicating about sensitivity. Talk about it with your family, with your friends, with your colleagues. Vulnerability is really, really contagious. So when you walk out that door today, think about the impact you can do simply by just carrying on this information. Talk about it at dinner tonight or when you go to work or school after this and ask people, do you know what a highly sensitive person is? Have you heard it before? Can we talk about it? For me, my power lies within my sensitivity. I grew up suppressing my sensitivity because it was socially constructed to judge it as a weakness. I spent my first years in the corporate world feeling claustrophobic because they couldn't handle the idea of sensitivity as something powerful or beneficial. And I want to change that. I imagine a work environment where everyone can feel free to express their softer sides. Where we can be empathic, open-minded, inclusive. Where we don't have to toughen up to fit in. There is a saying, People don't just quit companies, colleagues, leaders. They quit organizational cultures. And a culture without inclusion is no culture at all. We need to create space where all traits are appreciated and where we can all flourish. It's our, it's our responsibility to finally acknowledge the importance of diversity and inc inclusive at workplaces. And it's time to get the sensitives out of the corners, into the boardrooms, up on stages, into the spotlight, so we can finally see the important and the benefits of being sensitive. Because I was a very sensitive kid. I was the corner child. I am a very sensitive adult. And now I am the woman on stage. Thank you so much.